Chapter 41 Olivia set the fruit basket down and explained, She is my friend. I'm just here to check on her. Then, I'll leave. That won't be necessary. Being near people will worsen her condition. Miss Fordham, please. Belle stuffed the pillow into Olivia's arms and desperately said, Leave with my baby and take care of it. I will stall these people. Quick, run. As she spoke, she picked up the fruit basket Olivia brought and threw it at the doctor. I will kill you, you demon. I'll kill you if you even think about taking my baby away. Security guards burst through the doors with helmets and vests and took her down with a stun gun. Four men carried her to her bed and tied her to it. Belle was still screaming, give me back my baby. She slowly lost her strength as she was given a tranquilizer. She fell unconscious shortly after. Olivia was startled by everything that was happening before her. It felt more like a prison than a hospital. The doctors were merely wardens. The unconscious Belle looked so innocent. Olivia was escorted out of the room before she could even ask anything. When Olivia glanced back as she left, she saw Dr. Galloway scolding the nurses for letting her in. Dr. Galloway looked up at her and met Olivia's eyes. Dr. Galloway quickly averted her gaze and stopped her lecture. Olivia felt that something was off, especially with the fact that Dr. Galloway seemed to know who she was when they had never met. According to Ethan, it all happened to Belle after her high school examinations. Jeff abandoned her, and she was sent to this hospital for treatment after losing her baby and becoming mentally unwell. However, something was off about her. She kept mentioning a baby, but nothing about Olivia's father. Could it be that she had repressed memories of her father? Olivia left for Belle's house to ask her parents about what had happened. When she reached the Sanders, the place now belonged to someone else. Belle's parents had migrated overseas about a year ago. Olivia found it bizarre that they would abandon their daughter. The Sanders were an average family. They wouldn't have had the money to go overseas even if the youngest son was a prize-winning scientist. She asked Ryan out again, and as always, Ryan respectfully agreed. Miss Fordham. Ryan, I have something to ask. Do you know Belle Sanders? I do. That poor girl. She had a mental breakdown quite suddenly about two years ago. He sighed. Her family must have pressured her too much about school. She's in a bad state. Being mentally weak can cause a lot of problems. Ryan, did Belle have a boyfriend? Ryan waved his hand. No. She prioritized her studies and always kept her distance from guys. The only guy she was close to was Mr. Fordham. Mr. Fordham is a kind man. He helped them all unconditionally Jody, Belle, and also the late Angel. They had short lives. Mr. Fordham's care toward them had really gone to waste. I know that the family is not rich. Why could they suddenly migrate overseas? Her mother remarried to a rich man. Belle was supposed to go overseas for her studies but was unexpectedly caught in this mess. Mr. Fordham must feel so sorry for her if he knew. He was kind to Belle. He had high hopes for her too. Alas, such is the cruelty of fate. Chapter 42 Olivia gathered information on a few people. However, it was nothing new from what she learned from Ethan. She wanted to make reparations with these girls. Unfortunately, they had either moved somewhere else or back to their hometowns. They were nowhere to be found. Olivia had to stop and wait for Belle to settle down before visiting the psychiatric hospital again. She chatted with Ryan for a while before heading their separate ways. Olivia looked at the colors of the sky before hailing a cab home. It was the evening rush. Olivia leaned against the car window and closed her eyes to rest. The cab was playing the local news on the radio. A headline about someone jumping off the roof of a psychiatric hospital caught her attention. Olivia opened her eyes and asked the driver to turn up the volume. It was the psychiatric hospital she went to earlier. She did a quick search on her phone and saw that the deceased patient was Belle, whom she just visited. She killed herself. She was wearing a hospital gown in the picture. Her face had a strange smile. Olivia immediately felt a chill run up her back when she saw the picture. Her hair stood on end. The driver hurriedly asked, Miss, what's wrong? You look like you saw a ghost. Not nothing. It's a shame what happened to that girl. She's sick in the head. Happens all the time. My cousin's kid has depression and tried killing himself a few times. 
Leaving this earth seems like the only way they'll be free. Olivia was reluctant to agree with him. The woman who was tied to her bed and tranquilized plagued her mind. She was so young. She felt depressed the entire way home. Ethan was not back yet. She slumped on the sofa letting the physical and mental exhaustion wash over her. The image of Belle jumping was all she could think about. Olivia thought about how similar her ending would be after she died. She had no family. Would Ethan be devastated, or would he finally be free of her? Olivia turned her phone on and planned her trip to Mohe Town. She needed to cherish every day she had from now on. Ethan came home very late that night. When she saw him, she quickly went to him with her notebook. She had spent the whole night organizing the information. When are you free to go to Mohe? I've looked through hotels and plane tickets. We can go, the notebook in her hands was struck to the ground fiercely before she could finish. She finally noticed the anger on Ethan's face. His eyes were dead cold. The smile on Olivia's face froze. She cautiously asked, what's the matter? Ethan's tall figure stormily inched closer. He was more demon than man. Olivia was terrified by his glare. Were you at Leia's grave? Olivia nodded. Yes. I went to visit Leia's grave when I visited Grandma a while back. I know you hate my father, but I think I have the right to visit her at the very least. Visit. Ethan snorted coldly, then he threw a bunch of photos at Olivia. The grave under the plum tree had been shattered into pieces. The whole place was a mess. Olivia was stunned. What happened? Ethan received her shocked eyes with a cold glare. Don't pretend, Olivia. You always wanted things to go your way but you were kind. I've been gracious to you many times, but I never expected you to be cruel. Leia never enjoyed a day of her life on Earth, and this is how she is being treated after her death. Olivia only came to her senses after a while. Her face was filled with disbelief. You think I did that? Chapter 43 Ethan was silent. He looked so unhappy that Olivia could feel thorns growing around her heart. Ethan said, I hope it has nothing to do with you. You were there for three hours. Tell me, what were you doing there? Olivia thought it was ridiculous that she even had to explain. I told you I went to visit Grandma. Is it my fault that I have no one to talk to so I spend all my time talking to my dead grandmother? Besides, it's a gravestone, not a croissant. It would break my arm to do all that. Even if you're trying to frame me for it, at least bring some evidence. Look at this then. What is all this? Ethan revealed another stack of pictures with Olivia holding a hammer. Even Olivia was stunned. An old man in charge of grave maintenance dropped his tools. He looked so pitiful, so I helped him pick his tools up. Olivia didn't know how someone could take photos like this. She anxiously explained, I only said a few words in front of Leia's grave. The gravestone was fine when I left. Ethan, trust me, why would I do that? What would I have to gain from this? Ethan looked at the way she anxiously justified herself and found it ridiculous. He lifted her chin with his slender fingers and pressed the tip of his finger on her lip. Such a beautiful mouth, but so full of lies. Brent admitted that he told you where Leia's grave was, and that you went looking for a private eye. She knew Ethan would see through her lies, so she immediately admitted, yes. I did have a private eye on the case, but all I wanted was to understand why you're the way you are now. Even when I found out that Jody and Leia were the same person, I only left flowers on her grave. I went to Grandma's grave after that. Plus, I I I'm sick. I don't have the strength to climb the stairs in this house, let alone shatter a grave. Do you think I believe you? Leia had to be Jody even until the day she died. She had no enemies other than your family. Please tell me, who else would want to destroy her grave when she's been dead for two years? If no one else would, why do you think I would? Of course you would. You're unhappy that I've been cold to you for the past two years. You blame me for not saving our baby and forcing the Fordham to declare bankruptcy. You hate me to my guts, and you hate me even more for Leia. You learned who she was, and you lashed out at her grave. Olivia kept shaking her head. It wasn't me. Ethan inched his way closer as he continued. You were resolute about getting a divorce. However, you went back on your word and asked for one more month. What is your strategy here? You're avenging Jeff, aren't you? 
Olivia's anxious tears slid down her face. She realized she was never going to get out of this. She kept shaking her head. No, I would never think of doing that. Ethan ignored her desperate attempts to explain. He tightened the grip between his fingers and grabbed Olivia's chin. His eyes were filled with disappointment. Olivia, you must know that I prayed that none of this had anything to do with you. I asked someone to find evidence to prove that, but all I got were these. You went to the psychiatric hospital today, and Belle died after that. What did you say to her? Do you believe if you get your revenge, Jeff will regain consciousness? He blamed everything on Olivia. Olivia had no way to explain herself. Leia was Ethan's kryptonite. Destroying the gravestone and digging the grave up was a massive disrespect to the dead. Someone was dragging the Miller name through the mud. Who could stand for this? Ethan's fingers slid down and closed firmly around her neck. His grip tightened slowly. Chapter 44 Olivia, do you know how miserable Leia was while you were living your princess life? I personally went to the village where she used to live. It was a poor and desolate hellhole. Many of them hadn't had a full meal for three whole days. I heard she had been sold off and locked in a woodshed like a dog. She's the daughter of the Miller family, she should have been treated like a princess, but she was treated like dirt. She suffered for so many years, and when she finally made her way to Aldenvine, could have found her if she held on for a little longer. I Olivia couldn't speak. She could hardly breathe with Ethan's hands around her neck. Tears couldn't stop flowing from her eyes as pushed Ethan back, trying to stir him from his rage. Ethan was lost in his grief. She was tainted by that bastard, your father. She was choked to death and stuffed in a box. She must have felt so hopeless. You look like you've lost all hope now too. Can you feel even a little bit of what she felt? Let. Go. Olivia struggled, but it was useless. Ethan's eyes were red like a rabid animal. Olivia struggled to breathe. She knew that she was going to be choked to death if this continued. She had to keep fighting. Olivia, I was going to let you go, but you came barging in. The look on Ethan's face grew more intense. His eyes lost their focus as he slowly said, Liv, let's go see Leia. She must be so lonely. My suffering will stop after we're both dead in the ground. Olivia knew that Ethan had lost his mind when he said that. In her struggle, Ethan accidentally touched her wound that had just been stitched up yesterday. The wound ripped, and fresh scarlet blood soaked her white silk nightgown. Seeing the red, Ethan finally let her go. Olivia lay on the ground. Ethan wanted to check her wound, but Olivia quickly retreated. Her eyes stared at him in full alert. Ethan retracted his hand numbly and regained himself. What had he done? He almost killed Olivia. Your arm, he said hoarsely. Olivia got up from the ground, grabbed her coat from the sofa, braced the cold, and left the Miller residence. She thought she was a goner when he started choking her. It was like her whole life was about to end. She thought she would die, and worse, the near-death experience was not as calming as she thought it would be. She only had one thought run. Ethan looked down and stared at his hands. How could he do that to Olivia? The raging cold wind from outside brought him back to his senses. He quickly followed after Olivia with his car as he thought of how frantically Olivia had rushed into the snowstorm. Olivia was not thinking. She hid behind a tree the moment she heard a car. She was still trembling when she saw Ethan leave. She was safe from the clutches of danger. She searched for her phone and hesitated before calling Everly. Everly's loud voice came through. Miss me, babe. Olivia suppressed her sobs. Eve, can you come pick me up? Chapter 45 Olivia knew Ethan was deeply affected by his sister's death. His mental health became more unstable in the past two years. At that moment, he thought about killing her and sending himself off to see his sister Tool Everly wasn't here yet. Just then, a bright light shone from a distance before a car came to a halt not far from her. Ethan must have been smart enough to figure out that she hadn't left yet and turned back. The moment the car door opened, the man anxiously got down from the car and looked around. He was searching for something. Soon, he walked in Olivia's direction. Olivia stood there blankly before she cowered. Her whole body remained completely still only her fingers moved to grab the corners of her clothes tightly. Olivia was so scared as she heard his footsteps closing in on her. 
She held her breath and closed her eyes. She didn't know what Ethan would do when he found her. Would she lose her life and join Leela? The love of her life was now a completely different person. It was her first time feeling fear. Her heart was beating wildly with every step he took. She was scared, absolutely terrified. The man's leather shoes made a crunching sound as he walked on a pile of snow. The sound drew closer as if the call of death was getting nearer with each passing second. Olivia's face was drained of color. Then, Ethan stopped in his tracks right before a hundred-year-old tree. It was the only thing separating her from him. A few seconds later, she only heard the rustling sounds of him leaving. Olivia finally relaxed he didn't see her. However, she soon realized that she had left a trail of blood on her way here. It would stand out so clearly against the white snow. How could he not have seen her? Olivia was unsure of what he was thinking when he stopped for a few seconds. However, it was obvious, he was letting her go. Olivia slowly peeked her head out. She watched as the man's silhouette left under the moonlight. She couldn't see the look on his face, but she could tell the air around him was heavy. Perhaps it was his silent way of saying goodbye. Everly came to pick her up. She was mortified by the sight of Olivia being out in the cold and the blood on her. She screamed, Did Ethan do this? I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. He thinks he's all that because he's rich, huh? Infidelity and abuse. I'm going to call the media and have his sins splashed all over the news. H. Olivia laughed wryly. She quickly stopped Everly from smashing Ethan's car and saving her from paying the insurance for it. Please send me to the hospital. This has nothing to do with him. He doesn't know that I'm sick. Sick? What do you have? Everly asked. It's a long story. I'll slowly explain when we have time. It was the wee hours of the morning when Everly quickly sent her to the hospital to attend to her wound and came back. When they went back to Olivia's apartment, Everly sat opposite her and pulled a straight face. Tell me, what have you been hiding from me? How did your arm get hurt? Eve, please be mentally prepared for what I'm about to say. Everly lit a cigarette in her hand and put on a coy look. What? Are you underestimating me? What have I not seen? Just tell me. It'll start raining cows if I'm phased by it. I'm dying. Everly froze as she was smoking. Then, she heard Olivia continue. I have stomach cancer. Everly could not believe her ears and was dazed for a few seconds until she started choking. When she regained her senses, she frantically put her cigarette out. She continued coughing as tears began to form in the corners of her eyes. She looked helpless from all the crying and choking. While trying to snuff her cigarette in the ashtray, her arm accidentally bumped into the cup next to it. It spilled water all over the table. She quickly took a piece of tissue and haphazardly wiped the spilled water. However, with how aggressive she was, she managed to knock most of the things off the table. An unscrewed bottle of medication for stomach cancer fell over on the table. A few capsules rolled onto the floor. The white bottle cap spun a few times before it landed on the ground. Chapter 46 Everly muttered, Look how dumb I am. My ears are already acting up at this age, haha. <laughs> I actually heard you say you have stomach cancer. The anger I feel for that bastard must have gone to my cars. Olivia pressed her palm to the back of Everly's hand and said gently, Eve, you have to face reality. Everly stopped what she was doing and looked up at Olivia through blurry eyes. You're kidding, right? However, Olivia's eyes were dead serious. You know I never joke around. I was going through chemotherapy when I cut my hair short last time. Everly fought back her tears to no avail. She grabbed Olivia's hand tightly, still unable to fathom it. It must be a misdiagnosis. You're so young and strong as a bull. How could you have stomach cancer? Olivia sat her down and explained everything. Everly's face was covered in tears. With them both being so young, she had always taken their good health for granted. She couldn't comprehend that such a terminal illness had hit so close to home. Everything happening around her now felt surreal, like a dream. No no worries. The medical field is very advanced now. I'm sure you'll be fine if you work with the doctor on your treatment. Everly wiped her tears using the back of her hand. I'm sorry. I didn't know you went through so much. I will tag along for your chemotherapy sessions. I'm doing well financially now, 
so I can afford to not work for a year. I'll be with you until you get better. Olivia gently shook her head as her eyes gazed out the window lifelessly. Eve, let's go and enjoy the aurora together. Okay, once you get better, that is. And not just the aurora. Even if you want the stars in the sky, I'd pluck them just for you. Someone once said they would pluck the stars for me too. Everly wanted to smack Olivia's head. You hopeless romantic. He doesn't want you anymore. Why are you still thinking about him? Get better soon and date around to get back at him. Eve, you can't blame him. He's sick too. He has cancer too. I hope it's at the later stages. You can stay with him for a little longer, and then his inheritance will become yours once he dies. Olivia was unsure whether to laugh or cry. Come, let me tell you everything. They finally laid down on the bed as Olivia explained everything to her from the beginning. Her voice was sweet. It was like the light breeze on a summer evening, blowing one's worries away. Everly was silent after listening to everything. So, he is blaming you for his sister's death. And he cheated to get back at you. Isn't he even more of a scum now? Olivia rebutted, I can understand the care and guilt he feels toward his sister. If it happened to me, I wouldn't sit there and do nothing, either. He is suffering more than we could imagine. Liv, you can't just cook up excuses for his shitty behavior because he's suffering too. Quit being a hopeless romantic for him. Since he is letting you go, then go your separate ways. Take his alimony and leave. Eve, have you gotten over Josh yet? Everly fell silent. It was not easy letting go of a relationship of many years. I need time. Time heals everything. Even the vows you made when you were madly in love could be washed away by time until there's nothing left, right? No love lasts in this world. But I have no time anymore, Olivia muttered. Don't give up on your treatment. Eve, do you know what chemotherapy feels like? It feels like someone sucks everything in your body dry. I'm in pain. Everywhere hurts, and I have no strength. I'm so useless. This is only the first stage. They will put the chemicals into my bones in the later stages. It's going to be so painful. My father is still unconscious in the hospital, and my mother remarried a long time ago. The only man I've loved in my life has found his happiness too. I have nothing to live for anymore. Eve, can you be with me in my last days? Chapter 47 As a former medical student, Everly was very aware of the side effects of chemo, and she expressed her understanding of Olivia's decision moreover. A lot of patients died from the side effects rather than the cancer itself, which was a tortuous way to go. She could never selfishly request Olivia to endure the pain. She hugged the ladder from behind before she started to weep. Okay, I'll stay by your side. Olivia's pajamas were soaked with Everly's tears. Everly said, you must have been through so much pain. Sorry for not knowing this earlier. I've been doing better in the past two days. Eve, thank you. I don't want to leave the world alone. I had wanted Ethan to keep me company, but look at how things turned out. He and I are probably done for. Everly fumed at the mention of Ethan. Liv, you said that someone damaged his sister's grave, and there was footage of you with a hammer in your hand. Could you have been framed? Marina must have been behind this. No one else could have done that to me. The incident happened a month after Ethan agreed to keep her company. Marina must have had something to do with it. If you knew it was her, how can you be so calm about it? She has pulled a lot of tricks since last year to get us divorced, and to be honest. She wasn't the most tactful. Ethan knew what she was up to, but he always sided with her. At first, I'd stand up for myself, but I realized that the truth wasn't important at all. What mattered was that he'd chosen her over me. Everly tried to hype up the dejected Olivia. But this time, it's different. If she was the person who defaced Leia's grave, you should hold her accountable even if you get a divorce. Eve, Marina isn't the obstacle in my relationship with Ethan. He's troubled by the death of his sister. There's no way to resolve his grudge unless we somehow revive Leia. And even if we put behind all the grudges, our relationship is over. I get what you mean. But Liv, you shouldn't let him step all over you just because you think your family is to blame. He shouldn't be using Leia's death as an excuse for his infidelity. Ultimately, he has betrayed you and is heartless for abandoning you and your baby to save Marina. 
I admit that he was good to you in the past, but it's time for you to move on, Everly patiently advised her friend. She continued, Live, you only live once. Even if your dad is responsible for Leia's death, it is not your burden to bear. You do not have to accept punishment for wrongdoings that were not even your own. You asked if I have gotten over Josh. And my answer to that is, one day, I will. As for you, you have to live your remaining days for yourself, even if that means only for a day. Live for myself, all of a sudden, Olivia seemed to have gotten out of her rut. She still struggled to sleep well that night, for she'd have nightmares of a devilish Ethan grabbing at her throat. She woke up a few times in the night. It was already dawning the last time she woke up. She sat up in bed and blankly touched the area of her neck that Ethan gripped in her dream. Even if they could not spend their lives together, she would hate to be enemies with him. She looked at Everly, who was sleeping soundly, and tiptoed her way out of the room to wash up before leaving the house. The city was a sight to behold, covered in a blanket of snow. Even the vast ocean was calm under the sunlight as it palpitated peacefully in the form of small waves. A few seagulls soared in the sky, braving the chilly winds. Some distance away, ships blared their horns as they set sail. The world moved on even after Ethan left her, as if nothing had changed. She came to a decision and texted Ethan. This time, they met each other as promised. She showed up with every inch of her skin wrapped tightly under a white down jacket, a fuzzy beanie, and a pair of snow boots. It seemed like she was unable to stand the cold, and Ethan wondered if she had always been like this. His eyes traveled to the delicate and smooth skin on her neck, where even a slight pinch would instantly leave a red mark. She wrapped her neck in a thick knitted scarf. Standing under a snow-covered pine free, she looked as pure as a fairy. He was concerned about the bleeding on her arm yesterday. Did it get better? Chapter 48 Ethan had so much to say to her, but he only managed to blurt out a curt response. Let's go. They seem to be bound to a silent understanding not to bring up the past. Once they completed the procedure, they were officially divorced. Olivia didn't say a word throughout the process and turned to leave once the divorce was finalized. He couldn't help but ask, what are your plans after this? She didn't even turn around to look at him. It's none of your business, Mr. Miller. A piece of snow fell from the tree branch onto her shoulder. Ethan reflexively reached out to wipe it off, but his fingers froze midair when he realized that he had no right to do so. The reason he set her free was to put an end to the grudges between them. The sunny winter day reminded him of the weather on the day they got married. She was lovely in her white bridal dress wearing a bright smile. That day, she joked with him, I hope we'll never need to visit this place anymore. Never, but what if you cheat on me? Kill me, then. A dead man can't cheat. The seriousness in his expression then might have scared her a little. It had only been three years since that conversation took place on their wedding day. At present, Olivia felt his gaze, but she marched forward into the snow without looking back. She repeatedly reminded herself to handle the farewell with dignity. Still, she was overcome by sadness at the thought of this day being their last meeting and the fact that they would go back to being strangers. Not long after she exited the building, she overheard Marina's excited voice. Ethan, congratulations. Your wish came true. A wish comes true. Olivia smirked but acknowledged that the divorce might have happened sooner perhaps in the week she lost her baby if she hadn't stubbornly clung to Ethan for the past year. Ethan did not reply to Marina. She went on, the documents are ready. Let's head in to get the marriage certificate. Olivia did not hear Ethan's reply. Marina's remark suffocated her. Everly held her frail frame and gently asked, Are you okay? I'm fine. Everly glanced at the couple. Marina was speaking animatedly while Ethan hung his head low. The shade of the trees that cast a shadow on his face made it harder to discern his expression. Fucking cheaters. Everly spat and wiped away the tears on Olivia's cheeks. Don't waste your tears on that bastard. Olivia tried her best to put on a smile. I know. I lost control of myself for a moment there. You little dummy. You have to understand that you cannot rely on anyone. A man could be your safe harbor one day and leave you out in the cold the next. I haven't seen you wearing your confidence in a long time. You should have shown brightly in your world, 
living your best life. Olivia gave Ethan a final look before winding up the car window. He returned the stare, which he knew was one of farewell. Chapter 49 The post-divorce life wasn't as terrible as Olivia had thought. She rested at home for a few days with Everly's company. Her best friend prepared nutritious meals for her. Her condition improved. She did not suffer much from the effects of chemo. She could never be as healthy as her pre-cancer days. But at least her fainting spells had decreased. The wound on her arm healed, and her hair loss was under control. Everything seemed to be working out for her. Everly was happy for Olivia. They spent a few nights sleeping side by side. She believed that Olivia would eventually emerge stronger from the trauma as she had stopped sleeping by the baby cot. Seeing that Olivia was in great condition, Everly suggested, the class president organized a gathering. Let's attend it together since we're both free. I, Olivia wanted to turn down the invitation but was cut off by Everly. Our old classmates are doing pretty well for themselves. Aren't you looking for a better neurosurgeon? Who knows? Some of our classmates could connect you to people they know. Everly added, you always say that you don't have many days left. That's more reason not to laze around. It's good to go out once in a while. Everly soon understood Olivia's worries when she spotted her friend's troubled expression. Olivia was once the daughter of a wealthy family and a prized student who had a bright future. Now, Olivia was no longer comparable to their classmates. The Fordham were bankrupt and she dropped out of medical school. You're just being self-conscious. Look at me I'm not embarrassed for dropping out of med school to become the top salesperson. What are you afraid of? You have $10 million under your name, so you're a kind of a millionaire. Oh, didn't that jerk also award you some equity in Miller Group? There were a lot of detailed clauses in Olivia's divorce settlement. Ethan was rather generous in financial compensation. Although he did not give away half of his wealth, the compensation he provided Olivia was enough for a lifetime and more. She'd be getting millions in annual dividends from her shares in the Miller Group. On top of that, she was left with some properties to her name. Ethan might have done so to make it up to her or to sever all ties with her, but regardless, he was not stingy in this department. Olivia finally agreed to attend the gathering after being pestered by Everly. She realized that Everly was right after reading all the news about Ethan's upcoming engagement party. Since her days were numbered, she should leave the divorce behind her. All right, I'll go. That's more like it. You were the crush of many boys back in school. What if one of them is still into you? Treat yourself better and let loose when you're still young. After some serious thinking, Olivia asked, Will Peyton Ballinger be there? Of course. Well, Peyton is a nice guy but he isn't easy on the eyes. Wait a minute. Did your standards drop drastically after that painful divorce with that jerk? Olivia shook her head. No, I heard that he took over his father's business in the funeral industry after graduation, and he's doing quite well. I thought I should ask him to do his old classmate a favor and reserve a good parcel of land for my grave. Although Olivia breached the topic calmly, it was clearly upsetting for Everly. Ah. Can you please not? Olivia held Everly's hand and said, Eve, that's the reality. You need to accept it. We will eventually die someday. Chapter 50 Crestfallen again, Everly cussed, Why isn't that cheating bitch Marina the one dying? Well, that's fate. I suppose my baby misses me too much. Don't be too sad about it. I've completed the marathon of life, but you take your time. To soothe Everly, she joked, do pay me lots of visits and bring fresh flowers when I'm gone. Think of it as an early investment while I set things up in heaven for both of us. When it's your time to join me, we'll be living the high life in heaven with angels looking after us. Does that make you feel better? Everly finally smiled through her tears. Oh, I guess I'll need to find the perfect spot for your grave so you can rest in peace and look after your kids from above. Ah, shoot, I forgot you don't have kids. You should hang on for a few more years, and I'll make you the godmother of my child. Olivia grinned. Sounds good. At night, Olivia dressed up for the classmate gathering. Her short hair made her look chic and grown up. She exuded the elegance of a white rose when she was unsmiling. In Everly's words, Olivia could have stood anywhere in silence and still be pleasing to the eyes. 
On their way to the hotel, Everly asked, Olivia, what's your plan now? How about traveling the world? We have all the time and money. Olivia rested her cheek on her palm, staring at the scenery outside of the car window. She calmly replied, I'll create a charity foundation. There are a lot of terminal patients like me in this world. I'd also like to sponsor the education of low-income kids from the countryside. Everly was at a loss for words as she felt crushed by Olivia's decision. Even with all the money in the world, Olivia could only save everyone but herself. Still, she didn't blame anyone for her fate and was generous enough to light the path for strangers. Live, really, Olivia smiled. It's my way of paying for my dad's sins. Live, we can sense the good or evil in a person. I truly believe that your dad is a kind man. Have you ever thought that the evidence against him might be fake? I didn't believe that he'd hurt other women at first, not until I saw the evidence. I bet it was a worse nightmare for Ethan. He even tried to refute the evidence, but in the end, he had to give up. The evidence is likely real. Hem, could Ethan have pulled this on you to justify his affair? Eve, he's Ethan Miller. He doesn't need to get into this mess to ask for a divorce. That's true. Everly sighed. The evidence is rock solid, but I still feel that something's off. That makes the two of us. Dad was recovering well and I was planning to take care of him after he was discharged. Why did he suffer from a sudden heart attack? And there was Belle. After I visited her, she immediately jumped off a building on the same day. On my first visit to Leia's grave, someone took a photo of me. There are too many coincidences. But soon, Olivia collected herself and explained, I finally came to terms with it. I cannot deny my dad's crimes just because it's hard for me to accept. On the day dad was hospitalized, I checked the visitor log at home, but it was empty. Perhaps, he was just aggrieved at the bankruptcy. And Belle's death was probably a coincidence. The desecration of Leia's grave could have been Marina's doing. She wanted to force me to divorce Ethan. Now that she's gotten what she wanted, she will not bother me anymore. Everly frowned. You can't be sure. Liv, it's better to stay alert. Keep an eye on the people around you. The human character can be worse than demons and ghouls. Even if something looks improbable, it could well be the result of a deliberate plan. You shouldn't write it off as a coincidence. Olivia stared into the scenery afar and mumbled, if someone's behind all these, that would be horrifying. How much effort did they put into setting me up?